Hey guys, welcome to the flight test. I'm Andrus and today I'm going to show you how to build the FTP40. Let's get straight into the build. To start off on a build, we'll need this piece right here. Let's go ahead and remove all the foam tabs. Leave these airfoil cutouts in, we'll take those out later. For these paper tabs, make sure you don't cut through the paper on the back side. Next, let's glue this foam tab over. We need to do a C fold, which means that we'll be folding this over 180 degrees. Supply so glue around this tab so you don't glue it shut. For each step in this build, you'll need to wait about 45 seconds for your hot glue to dry. If any particular step needs more time, we'll let you know. Now we're gonna fold over these paper tabs. Let's start from the back and work our way up forward. Apply a bead of glue at the base and fold it over with a scrap piece of foam. Stop at 90 degrees first with your scrap piece of foam Hold it there for about 10 seconds, and then fold it the rest of the way over for a nice crisp fold. Now for this curved section, we won't be able to fold that over all at once because of the curve. We'll need to cut them into sections about a half an inch wide. Now let's do the same process on these one at a time. Now we're also going to fold over this front tab. Repeat the process on the other side. Now, let's take a couple of popsicle sticks, line up the bottom edge of the popsicle stick with the edge line. Let's go ahead and glue that down. We're also going to double this up with another popsicle stick. Repeat the same process on the other side. Now let's take a ruler, line it up with these edge lines, and bend these pieces up to give it a little bit of a crease. If your ruler has cork on the back, make sure that the cork is facing upward so that it doesn't interfere with the creasing. Next, let's fold these side plates up in a B-fold. Now a B-fold is where you rotate up the side plates so that it meets beside the bottom plate. For this step, we can also use our dihedral gauge as a 90 degree angle. Let's go ahead and glue this in. We're going to put a bead of glue favoring it on the side of the bottom plate. You'll need to wait about 45 seconds for your hot glue to dry. Now repeat the same process on the other side. Now let's grab this piece, which will seal at the bottom of our fuselage. But first, we need to remove all the foam tabs. Again, make sure not to cut through the paper on the back side of the foam. We can also pop out this little foam tab from the middle. Remove the paper from the score cut forward. Next, we're going to fold over this paper tab, just like we did on the nose. Let's go ahead and test fit this bottom piece. Let's 
Just gonna line it up so that it's flush up here with this notch and flush in the back. Once we're happy with that, we're gonna apply glue just to this front portion for now. Once we have that seated like we want it to, we can roll this over on the table to make it nice and flush. Rock it back and forth a little bit along that curve so it's flush along all the edges. Make sure that you also apply some pressure from the side so that it seats properly. Now we can crack open the back portion and glue this down as well. You also want to apply a bead of glue inside that hinge. Okay. So also take this piece to the table and lay it down nice and flat. Now let's move on to our tail. Let's go ahead and bevel our control surfaces. For the elevator, we're going to do a 45 degree bevel on the stabilizer side. Make sure you don't cut through the paper on the back side, but if you do, just follow it up with a piece of tape. Now let's do the same thing with the rudder, but this time we're going to put the bevel on the rudder side. Now let's reinforce our hinges with a bead of hot glue. Have a scrap piece of foam on hand to scrape off the excess. Once you've glued this, leave it cracked open so that you don't glue your hinge shut. Now let's do the same thing with our rudder hinge. Now we can pop out these tabs from the horizontal stabilizer. Now let's join our two tail pieces together. To do this, we're going to crimp down on this piece on the vertical stabilizer and insert it into the tab on the horizontal stabilizer. Now that we've done the test fit, let's glue this in. We're going to apply glue on either side of this tab cutout. While you're gluing this in, make sure that it's at 90 degrees. Now let's test fit this onto our fuselage. Once again, we're going to crimp down these two tabs here. We're also going to crimp down on this tab right here. Now before we test fit our tail, we have to take out this tab right here. Let's take a razor blade and cut it all the way out. Now we can test fit our tail. Make sure that this piece is flush right here. We also want to make sure that the horizontal stabilizer is sitting completely flat relative to the fuselage. Okay, let's go ahead and glue this in. We're going to apply glue on the top surfaces here next to the tabs and on the inner sides of the back of the fuselage. Once again, make sure that your horizontal stabilizer is flat relative to the fuselage and that your tail surfaces are 90 degrees to each other. Now we'll follow up with a bead of glue on our tail joints to reinforce it. Now to make our tail skid, we're going to take a barbecue skewer and just poke it right here. We're going to leave about a half inch hanging off the end, so we're going to cut it right here and glue it in.
Wipe off any excess glue with a scrap piece of foam. So to install our turtle deck, we'll need these two formers here. Pop out the foam tab on this former and glue it in a C fold. Now we can go ahead and glue this former in this tab. Apply glue on either side of the tab and push it back in the tab. Now let's glue the smaller former and the smaller tab cut out in the back. Now let's get our turtle deck piece and remove the two foam tabs from the sides. We'll also need to remove the paper from the inside of this piece. Now let's take this piece to the edge of the table and roll it over this way. Now while we're rolling, we're going to want to move the wider side of the piece further than the back side to get this nice tapered curve. Now let's take a razor blade and bevel these pieces back here. Okay. Now we can test fit this piece. When we put this on, we're going to want to slide the vertical stabilizer through this tab first. Then we're going to want to line up one side like so and roll the rest over to the other side. This piece here should be flush with the former and these paper tabs should stop right at the horizontal stabilizer. Let's take that back out and glue it in. So I'm only going to apply glue to one side first because it's easier to do this piece one side at a time. Again, make sure that you slide in this piece first and then line up the side with the glue. Now that we have that lined up the way we want, we can rotate this onto the table and use it to help keep this nice and flush. Now let's glue the other side. So apply glue across the top of the formers and on the side of this piece. <clears throat> Once again, when we have this piece lined up where we want to, we can roll this over onto the edge of the table to keep it nice and flush. Give this a good minute to dry. Now let's seal up these seams here with a bead of glue and a scrap piece of foam. You can use a ruler to help keep this seam nice and straight. Now I'll do the same process on the other side. And the next step, we'll need these two formers right here. Once again, remove the center foam tabs. Go ahead and glue these in C folds as well. Now we can glue these in these two tabs right here.
Next, we'll need this long rectangular piece right here. Let's go ahead and crack these two score cuts open. You will be removing these foam tabs later, but it's nice to keep them in now because it helps with your bevel. We're going to do a bevel on this main piece on both sides. Now let's go ahead and remove both these home tabs. Awesome. Let's also remove the paper from the inside of this piece. Now let's take this to the edge of the table and give it a nice smooth curve. Now let's go ahead and test fit this piece. Gonna line up one side, make sure that it's flush with this former, and roll it over to the other side. Now let's go ahead and glue it in. Once again, we're only gonna do this one side at a time, so only apply glue to one side. Be careful not to burn yourself through the paper. You're going to use a ruler on the other side to help. Hold this here for a good minute to dry. Now when we roll this over and glue the other side, we're going to use the ruler to help us out. So just put the ruler over the paper tab, curve it over with your, with your hands, and press up against the fuselage with the ruler. Now that we've practiced that move, let's go ahead and glue it in. We'll need to apply glue on the top of all the formers. and on the side piece near the paper tab. Hold this here for a good minute to dry. Now if there's any paper tab still flapping up, we can go ahead and follow that up with a bead of glue. Now to finish off the top of our fuselage, we'll need these two pieces here. Let's first go ahead and glue this former in. Crimp down the little tab and glue it in. Just like the last piece, we're going to open up these two score cuts, do a bevel on the main inside piece, and remove the foam tabs. We're also going to remove the paper from the inside just like the other piece. Let's take this to the edge of the table and roll it over. Let's go ahead and glue this in one side at a time just like the last piece. Now let's test fit roll this piece. So ruler on the paper tab, fold over with your hands and hold right there until it dries. Now let's do the same thing but this time with glue. We're going to put glue on the top of the formers and right on the paper tab.
shooting these buildings. You can take the opportunity now to sign your servos. If you don't know how to do that, we'll have a video showing you how to in the description below. For our tail servos, we're going to need some extensions. These particular extensions have the little clip on them. Uh, if they don't, just go ahead and seal it up with tape or a bit of glue. Let's go ahead and drop these in. Put the servo wire in first. Now that we've checked that our servo fits, we can pull it back out a little bit and glue down the tabs. Now let's do the same thing on the other side. Now we can set our fuselage aside and work on the wing. First, we'll need to remove this foam tab. We'll also need to remove these two foam tabs, but make sure to leave the paper on the back side. You can use a barbecue skewer or a flathead screwdriver to help you get these out. Now let's crack it open at the leading edge and do a double bevel. Make sure you don't cut through the paper on the back side, but if you do, just follow it up with a piece of tape. We'll also need to do a single bevel on the aileron hinge. Now let's go ahead and glue this tab over as a C-fold. Uh. Let's crack open the score cut in our spar and glue it together. Now to install our spar, we'll need to first crimp down on these two tabs and then insert them into these two cutouts. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's glue it in. Now if you want to build landing gear for this build, you'll need a paint stirrer. Now the landing gear is completely optional and you don't have to do this step if you don't want to. Cut the paint stirrer to length to match these etch lines inside of the wing. To cut the paint stirrer, score it with a razor blade on both sides and then bend it to break it apart. Now let's glue these pieces down. Apply glue on the back and put it right over the etch lines.
Now let's install our aileron servo. You don't need to put the servo arm in yet because we can get to that pretty easily later. Just line up our servo in between these two etch lines here with the servo wire coming out of the front. Also leave the top part of the servo sticking out just a little bit. Let's go ahead and glue this in. Move it around a bit to spread the glue around evenly. Uh, now if you haven't already, go ahead and install a servo extension wire for the servo. Make sure you secure these wires together with a dab of hot glue or a piece of tape. I also like to glue this down to the inside of the wing, just so it stays in place. Now let's take the tip of a barbecue skewer and run it through these two score cuts. And let's do a test fold on the wing. Now while you're folding this over, make sure that the top surface of the wing is parallel to the bottom surface. Let's reinforce this wing. We're going to run a thin bead of hot glue down each one of these score cuts and wipe the excess off with a squeegee. Then fold the wing over and let these two score cuts dry. Now let's go ahead and glue this wing together. Make sure that you have enough hot glue for this step. We'll need to apply glue down the leading edge, on top of our servo, across the spar, and on this little trailing edge piece right here. Now we're also going to reinforce our aileron hinge just like we did on our tail. Okay, let's repeat the same process on the other wing. Now that both our wings are done, we're ready to join them together. But before we do that, let's go ahead and tape these servo wires out of our way. Okay. 
Now let's flip the wings over and tape the bottoms together. Now we can flip it back over. For this next step, we'll want to have our dihedral gauge on hand. Now we can crack open our wing hinge, apply glue inside to join our wings together. While you're gluing your wing, just put the dihedral gauge under one wing tip and it'll give you the right amount of dihedral. Give this a good minute to dry. Now let's fold over the excess tape making sure not to cover up this hole right here. Let's get another piece of tape to seal up the rest of the top of the wing. Now let's take our serve wires and stuff them in this hole right here uh, so that they aren't in the way when we put our wing in. Now make sure that you do this in such a way so you can still remove those from inside the fuselage. Let's pop out these two airfoil cutouts on the fuselage. Cool. And now let's slide our wing in. Uh, one thing to note is that we want to make sure these wires are coming through uh, on top of the wing. So a good way to make sure that this happens is to do this with the fuselage upside down. To check that our wing is centered, we want to make sure that this joint right here is right in between the two fuselage cheeks in the front as well as in the back. Now let's reach back into the fuselage and pull out our aileron servo wires. Now if you have trouble reaching in and pulling them out, you can take your uh, push rod and bend a little hook to help you fish them out. Now that we've made sure our wing is centered and we pulled our servo wires out, we can go ahead and glue the wing in. Apply a bead of glue on all four sides of this seam and use a scrap piece of foam to wipe off the excess. Now let's assemble our power pod. Now let's go ahead and pop out these two tabs. We're also going to pop out these two foam channels right here. Now let's do an A-fold. An A-fold is where the side plate rests above the bottom plate. An easy way to do this is to lay the side plate on the table and rotate the bottom plate up to meet it. Let's go ahead and glue these in. We're going to favor the glue on the bottom side of the side plate. Do the same thing on the other side. Let's grab our firewall and glue it on. Make sure that the holes are pointing towards the side of the cavity. We can hold this flat on the table to make sure everything is flush. To reinforce it, we can follow it up with a piece of packing tape over the front. And a bead of glue on the inside seams. To install our motor, we need to pop out this center piece of tape right here, as well as this piece of tape for our motor wires. 
Also, we're just going to pop out the tape for our motor screws. First, let's thread in these motor wires. And then we're going to grab four screws for our motor. Once we have each screw started, we can go back and tighten them all down. Now let's plug in our motor wires to our ESC. We can also grab a receiver, bind this up, and test our motor direction. Alright, to test motor direction, we're just going to spin up the motor a little bit and feel which way it's going with our fingers. Alright, so right now, looking from the front, our motor is spinning counterclockwise, which is what we want. If your motor is going in the wrong direction, just swap any two of these leads and it will spin correctly. Now we're going to thread the battery connector through the front hole in the power pod and the servo wire from the ESC through the back hole. Now let's connect all of our servo wires to our receiver and put a power pod in. If you plug in the servos into the wrong ports right now, don't worry because you can always change it later. And to make things go in a little bit easier, we're going to crimp down on all four of these tabs on our power pod. Make sure the power pod seats down all the way in the back by pressing down right here. Now that we've made sure that our power pod is all the way back and that it's seated all the way down, we can stick a barbecue skewer through these holes. Do this one side at a time. Use a twisting motion like a drill when you're popping these in. Now we can thread it through both holes and cut it so that it's sticking out about a quarter inch on both sides. Now let's secure a power pod down from the front. Stick a barbecue skewer through these two holes here. Now let's cut two pieces of this barbecue skewer, each about two inches long. Now let's take our barbecue skewer out from the back and lift our power pod up a little bit so it's not in the way. Let's go ahead and glue in these two barbecue skewers. Put a bead of glue over each hole and insert the barbecue skewers with a twisting motion. Wipe off any excess glue with a scrap piece of foam. Now we can insert our power pod from the front first, hooking on these two barbecue skewers, and then thread our other barbecue skewer back to the back. And don't forget to plug your ESC into your receiver. I'm just going to take our receiver and tuck it in between the wing and the power pod. Now let's move on to our hatch. We're going to start by removing all the foam tabs. And we're going to remove the paper from the inside of this section right here. Now let's do a B-fold on these side cheeks. Now let's give this piece a bit of a curve with our fingers. And let's do a test fit. Now let's go ahead and glue this piece in. We're going to apply glue on the sides and where it contacts at the front edge. Let's roll this over on the table to get a nice flush curve. Also, as you're pushing this against the table, apply some pressure from the sides. 
Give it a gentle rocking motion to make sure that it's flush all along that curve. Now let's fold over this little tabby right here. I'm going to apply glue on the sides and the bottom. Let's rotate this piece up on the edge of the table so we get a crisp fold right there. Now let's do the same thing with these two tabs right here, one at a time. Okay, let's test fit our little hatch piece. So this lip right here is gonna go in between the bottom plate of the fuselage and the wing, and the flat surface of this piece will just ride right up against those popsicle sticks we put in earlier. Now let's take our barbecue skewer and stick it through these holes, again, one side at a time. And just like for our power pod, we'll leave about a quarter inch on either side. Now we can stick our barbecue skewer through these holes. Now to make our canopy, we're going to draw an imaginary line from this corner to this corner right here. Mark that with our ruler and then crease it upwards. Do the same thing on the other side. Now that we have our little tabs folded over, we're going to glue this together. To do this, we're just going to line up this edge with this crease. All right, let's go ahead and glue it together. Be careful not to burn yourself doing this because the heat from the hot glue transfers through the post board really well. Repeat the same process on the other side. Now let's test fit our canopy on our fuselage. We're just going to hang the back edge of the canopy over the edge of our turtle deck about a quarter inch. All right. Make sure that this edge lines up parallel with the uh, paper tab and that it's at the same level on both sides. Now we can go ahead and glue this in. Apply a small bead of glue along the inner edge of the whole canopy. Now let's do our linkages for all the control surfaces. Let's start off with our elevator linkage. Go ahead and pop a control horn into this slot. Let's use the middle hole on our control horn. Make sure that you're holding your elevator flat. Also, make sure that your servo arm is 90 degrees relative to the servo and mark where you need to make a Z-bend. To do the Z-bend, use a pair of pliers and bend the wire 90 degrees towards the fuselage. Uh, remove the push rod from the plane so it's easier to work on. Grip it where you just bent it and bend it another 90 degrees the other way. Then we can go ahead, trim off the excess and bend it so that it's straight. And we're going to insert this into the outermost hole on our servo arm. Now let's glue in our control horn. You can wipe off any excess with a piece of foam. Now let's repeat the same process for our rudder. For our rudder, we're going to use the outermost hole on the control horn.
We're gonna insert our push rod into the outermost hole in our servo arm. Now that we have our linkages set up on a tail, let's make sure we have those servo screws in. Now we can move on to our aileron linkages. Take your servo arm and put it on your servo. Point it straight up 90 degrees. We're going to use the middle hole on our control horn and the outermost hole on our servo arm. Use the same process as before to mark and bend your Z-bends. Ah. Repeat the same process on the other side. Now I'll show you how to install the optional landing gear. Uh, to start off, we're going to take one of these landing gear wires, match it up with the horizontal uh, slot on the bottom of the wing, and bend it 90 degrees. Next, mark where this line ends, and bend it another 90 degrees upwards away from the wing. So since we have dihedral in the wings, this right here will not stand up completely straight. It will actually be at a slightly acute angle relative to this piece down here. Now we're going to measure up 4 inches from the base of this bend and bend it 90 degrees outwards. Make sure that this portion of the wire is parallel with this portion of the wire. If it's not, you have to adjust this angle uh, to make it parallel. Now for this build, I'm going to use some actual wheels, but in the kit we do have foam board wheels included if you don't want to use these. To make these foam board wheels, simply glue three of these circles together and that will make your wheel. The rest of the process is the same. Let's put our wheel on our landing gear. Now we're going to trim our landing gear wire, leaving just about a quarter inch poking out from the wheel. Now we're going to make a little wheel collet just with some hot glue. Just make sure that you don't glue the wheel to the landing gear wire. Now I'm just going to take one end of the landing gear wire and open up this cavity. 
And now we can seat our landing gear wire right inside. Let's go ahead and glue this in. We can add some more glue on top and wipe off the excess with a squeegee. Repeat the same process on the other side. Now we're going to measure up four inches from the base of this bend and bend it 90 degrees outwards. Now another option to skewer a wheel on is to use these little wheel collars. We have a link in the description below if you want to buy these from our store. Now let's uh, put a battery in and test the CG. All right, so put your fingers on the bottom of the wing and hold up the plane. The plane should be level or slightly nose down. Now let's test all the control surfaces and program our transmitter. Since I'm using a six channel receiver and I have the ailerons plugged into separate channels, I need to change my setting on the transmitter to have dual ailerons. To do this on Spectrum, Go to the main menu, system setup, aircraft type, wing, and dual ailerons. Now let's plug this in. Okay, so my elevator's reversed. Let's also sub trim all our surfaces so that they sit neutral. I'm also going to put in 30% Expo for all my surfaces. Let's unplug our battery and put our prop on. Let's go ahead and install our prop. Alright, now that we're done with our build, we're ready for a maiden. Alrighty, so I'm flying on like a half charge 3 cell 2200 right now. It'll do some pretty fun stuff for Warbird, too. So this plane really just flies like any of the other four-channel flight test Warbirds. Uh, pretty docile, but you can definitely throw it around if you want it to. Let's see how it stalls real quick. So I'm going to bring it back around, point it into the wind, and pull up on the elevator while cutting back on throttle. It's actually a pretty manageable stall. Like you can definitely still control the ailerons uh, the way you want it to and point the nose in the direction you want it to with the rudder. Okay, so that was the build and the maiden of our FTP40. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this build. Check out our other videos and we'll see you next time.